Now, here's my story. I emigrated out from Ireland, and I moved to San Diego, California. Are there any first-generation immigrants in the room? Anybody here emigrated to America? A couple of you, all right? Well, when I moved here, uh, just so you know, when you, when you come from another country and you come to America, everybody back home has a certain perspective of what life in America is like. For example, everyone back home in Dublin is convinced everyone in America is a millionaire. So I'm getting on the plane. They're like, Brian, all the Yanks are millionaires. They're all millionaires. They have two cars, three television sets. You go down to the local stores. They just give you stuff. You don't have to make payments for years and years and years. An amazing country. So I move out to San Diego. I'm three days in the country, and I'm sitting down in a bar one evening, which is where Irish people go to think and plan, by the way. <laughs> and I'm sitting down. I'm having a nice chat with a fellow by the name of Bill Johnson. Bill and I are getting along great. Bill's asking me about Ireland. I'm asking him about San Diego. Well, during the course of the conversation, I say, Bill, what do you do for a living? He tells me he's in real estate. He starts telling me all about it. And right about that time, whips out a business card and hands it to me. Now, I had never seen a business card that looked like this before. First of all, in the top right-hand corner of it, he had a picture of himself. In fact, that picture looked so good, I didn't even recognize him when he was sitting in front of me. I think. <laughs> the next thing is down on the bottom left-hand corner of that business card was a gold star. And inside that gold star, it said, Million Dollar Club. Well, you have to picture the scene. I'm a fifth-generation painter and decorator son. Grew up on the side, side, south side of Dublin in a poor neighborhood. This is the first time in my life I'd come face-to-face -face with a real-life, genuine millionaire. <laughs> I'm terrified, terrified to talk to him. I said, Bill, are you, are you, are you like the best realtor in San Diego? Are you, are you the best in California? He goes, oh, no, Brian. There's a bunch of people doing just as well, if not even better than me. I'm like, really? I said, uh, Bill, um, could I come visit your office sometime? He said, sure, Brian. I said, I have nothing going on, Bill. Could I come over tomorrow? He says, that's funny. I have nothing going on either. Come on over tomorrow. That'd be fine. <laughs> so the next day I go over, I visit this little office, ERA Advantage in Hillcrest in San Diego. And Bill introduces me to his broker and all the fellow agents in the office. And every time I met an agent, they handed me a card. Guess what every single one of them had on their business cards? Million Dollar Club. I'm walking to the place going, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Four days in the country, and I'd figured out the place they churn out millionaires, like cookie cutters. I'm just fired up. <laughs> I go up to the broker, I say, lady, what have I got to do to get into this business? She goes, Brian, here's a referral to Anthony's Real Estate Schools. You've got to study for your license and pass your test. And if you pass your test, you come back here and interview with us, and we'll see if you have what it takes to work with us here at ERA. So I go after it. Morning, noon, and night, I'm studying the riparian rights and all those other things I'd never use. Get my license. And I come back for the interview. I remember the interview like it was this morning. I'm all dressed up to the nines. I have my resume looking perfect. I have my mother back home in Dublin saying prayers for the big job interview. I'm sitting down in front of my future broker, Nicole. We're having this nice chat. About 20 minutes into the conversation, she says, Brian, I think I'm going to hire you. And I'm on fire, on fire. Got a little carried away. Walking around town telling people how I got hired on the very first real estate interview I ever took. <laughs> Wasn't until some time after I found out what our actual criteria for hiring somebody was, and that is if you had a license and the ability to fog a mirror, <laughs> yep, we can use you, yep, 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 you qualify. <laughs> now, what's the very first thing they have you do when you get in the business? Can you remember what's the very, very first thing? What's that? Even before cold calling. You write checks, that's it, yeah. You see, I thought I'd gotten a job. No, Palace is real estate. This is where you pay us first. This is how it works. <laughs> Brian, you gotta have business cards. Okay, fine, there's a check. Brian, you gotta have stationery. Okay, fine, there's a check. Brian, you have to have the magnetic signs for the side of your car. Okay, fine, there's a check. Brian, you gotta have a pager. Oh, you can't do business without a cell phone. All day long, I sign checks and contracts, and at the end of the day, they send me home. <laughs> I show up for work the next day. I have the pager on. I have the cell phone on. I come walking in like deputy dog. I'm just kind of like raring to go. <laughs> Walk in. Broker sits me down, carries over the big fat book, holds it up in front of me, says, Brian, inside of that book's all your future hopes and dreams. That book's called a crisscross directory. It's a listing of all the people who own the homes and the streets and the neighborhoods around here. Here's a little one-page script you've got to memorize. Get comfortable with the script, call the people in the book, ask them if they're selling. If they tell you they are, we'll make a little appointment. You then make, do the CMA, find out how much their home is worth. You go on over, put the home on the market, and whenever it sells, 6% of whatever it sells for is yours. I mean, I'm saying, great, that's it. Yeah, that's it. I said, no wonder you're all millionaires. So we start practicing the script, role-playing, she called it. She's pretending to be a seller, and I'm pretending to be an agent, and she's pretending, and I'm pretending. We're using all kinds of different voices and all kinds of things, okay? So an hour of this goes by. I said, Nicole, I think I'd be more comfortable calling the real people than doing this. She says, that's the spirit. So right before I get on the phone to call people, she comes over to me and gives me her little Vince Lombardi motivational speech. She says, Brian, there's only two things you need to know. Number one in this office, our policy is you call until you get an appointment. That's it. You call until you get an appointment. Might take a half hour, might take an hour, might take all day. It doesn't matter. You stay on that phone until you get an appointment. And the second thing is this. You don't worry about it. People will love to talk to you. Away you go. <laughs> so I get on the phone. Hello, this is Brian Buffini with ERA Advantage Real Estate. And I was wondering if you might be interested in selling your home. 
Another one of you friggin' realtors, call me at home. Leave me alone, you lowlife. Click. Okay. I must have got a bad one. Let me try that again. Well, that first day, I stayed calling for about seven hours. But by the end of the day, my attitude had shifted a little bit, you see. By the end of the day, I'm like, how are you thinking about selling your home? No? Fine. Click. Done. I picked up that book. I went marching back into the broker's office. I put it down on her desk. I said, lady, I don't want you to take this personally. I'm never doing that another day in my life. Do you have anything else I could be doing around here? She's like, calm down, Brian, calm down. You might be one of those people just not cut out for cold calling. Come back here tomorrow, I'll have you do something a little easier. So the next day I show up, she has me spend all day working on the expireds. They're a lot easier, aren't they? <laughs> These are people who just came off their recent six-month sojourn with a realtor and can't wait to hear from one the morning after their house doesn't sell. I came into the end of the second day. I said, Nicole, I don't know if I'm going to make it in this business. I don't know. I spent eight hours on the phone today, and the only thing that I've been able to find out is that these folks here, they're even more pissed off than the first group of people you had me call. And I said, look, you got to level with me here. Is this your entire list of career options for me? Because this door knocking looks like this only in person. So I gave it one more shot. And I actually went out and I door knocked the for sale by owners. <laughs> it's kind of interesting because it's right around that time I first started carrying a gun. <laughs> 